Well, one of the, the, the main goals from the beginning with the AFP was to create consistent standards of competition. And to, in order to crown a champion, there has to be a schedule of events that have some consistency that uh, is, is to a certain degree bulletproof uh, or at least, um, you know, is explainable to, to a non-competitor or to a coach or to a parent. And so at the heart of that is consistent judging. Well, I think what's funny, the old story of judging is um, when we were doing it, we would show up at, uh, um, I remember one of the very first X Games, and it was kind of like who was on the judging panel. And uh, it, was, it was people that really didn't maybe know, understand the sport. And they, you know, I remember one time someone said there was a, a ski instructor that was local that just we really kind of threw in the booth. and. Um, it was kind of a, you know, hey, we're trying to figure it out. We didn't really know what we were doing, and, and we were competing. It was a very fast and progressive sport, and it was super hard for judges to keep up with. But the, the progression of what happened is kind of like I said, we, I went into uh, from being an athlete competitor to a handful of other competitors, and guys like Shane Zox and Shannon Shad at the time, Mike Atkinson and things like that, we went into the judging booth, and we started having athletes judge athletes. And that is kind of the basis of the beginning of AFP judging, was letting athletes judge the athletes, the competitors, and really try to keep the sport progressive. And who better to do that than guys that were just freshly off the tour and competition. And then that continued to blossom. We kind of went with that for a long time and um, kind of a little bit of luck or whatever, I kind of, since I was head judge, I had a lot of people asking me to come set up judges for other events in other countries and other big events. And so we started getting kind of organically a lot of different top level athletes that were done and into the judging booth. And we would um, go judge all these other events around the world. And that kind of started spreading out more. And then I would go, I went to a couple snowboard judging clinics and we started creating our own clinic. And then as the AFP started, which was a big part of this, um, we basically came together and tried to make a consistent form, format and judging philosophy. I think when we, we came down to coming back and really coming up with an, a formula that was progressive friendly. And that is something that we have thought was super important with uh, free skiing. Uh, a lot of us back in the day came from freestyle uh, moguls and aerials, which had a kind of a, a rough time, rough patch there with having a standardized, formulated judging pattern that maybe restricted um, skiing's progression in moguls and aerials. And so we really wanted to stay away from that. We said, hey, we want a format that's going to be progressive friendly, number one. And that was the first kind of goal. It's like, let's let, let the athletes dictate the sport. And that was super important for us. And it, and it still happens today. We want the athletes to dictate the sport, not the judges. We want the athletes to say, hey, if I can do a triple, well, we're not going to tell you not to. You know, go for it. And let's see where it goes. And they dictate the sport. And progressive, friendly judging format was, was a huge part of it. But on the, on the flip side, we also wanted to make sure that we're covering all of our bases. And style is a very important part of of it, but it's hard to kind of say style. Style is like art, you know, so it's, it's where does that fit in? So style kind of came into this thing of execution, like how did they execute it? Is it part of a style? Is it how well was it done? And so that's kind of under execution, but then we also put in, uh, so we have progression, we have difficulty, we have variety, and we have amplitude. And so those were the five categories that we really wanted to put down for us to kind of really focus on as key elements of how to judge uh, slope style and half pipe. And that's been you know, super important for us to kind of come up with that, that format. It's progressive friendly, um, but we, have, we do have some categories that we were focused on. Well, I think with the, the athletes, there, there's two sides. Of it. One of it, we, we're always constantly communicating with the athletes that are current to try to find out what's hot, what do they like, what's going, um, you know, what's the new progressive tricks, things like that. But to also make sure that they know and we communicate to them that it is open, it is progressive friendly, that we don't have any mandatory rules that they have to do, that they have to do certain tricks. They don't have to give us their score sheet the night before an event. They don't have to um, you know, do these mandatory things. So we kind of wanted to make sure we keep the communication open there. And I feel like the athletes were really pleased with that. Like, hey, this is a progressive sport. They can do whatever they want and we're gonna to try to judge appropriately. 
We also had a lot of athletes, like I've mentioned, that kind of went from an athlete to the judging panel. And guys like, you know, Steel Spence and Mike Atkinson and, uh, you know, uh, we've got some European flavor out there with the Simon Chernstrom and Greg Tuscher and, and a lot of, uh, you know, different athletes that are in the, in the judging booth. So they have their own opinions as well because they were an athlete and they knew how to distinguish difficulty of tricks um, as much as possible. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, the tricks are happening so quick, it's progressive. But to have athletes on the panel that are also in great communication with athletes that are on uh, the competition scene, it's the best way for us to continue to keep that sport progressive. And I think that's kind of what's the most important thing. The AFP judging program is, is something that I think kind of goes a little bit um, overlooked in so much that it doesn't get a lot of the um, hype, it doesn't get a lot of the coverage, uh, quite frankly, th that it deserves. Uh, the AFP has developed the most comprehensive judging materials, program, presentation, clinic handout, exam, and review materials that there are in the world. Um, these are utilized in AFP um, clinics throughout the world where countries uh, approach us that want to host a clinic. A lot of times it's in, in partnership with a fist clinic. Um, and the AFP materials are used for half pipe and slope style uh, certification um, at the gold level for the AFP. And then there's a silver bronze uh, level clinic uh, for those more entry level events. I mean, I think what's great about what we've done with the Olympics is we've taken um, like our educational AFP educational clinic. We've gone around all the different countries and ed educated everyone on how the format and the philosophy is for judging. Then um, we've had each country go and select their, um, th their vetted judge, basically, to represent their country. And then the FIS col uh, council goes through it and selects their judges. So we have gone through and basically gotten the most experienced judges per country um, so there's lots of experienced judges, let's say, in one country, but you can only have one per country. But we, we do have very high-end experienced judges that represent different countries that have, are very familiar with top-level events that have been doing it for a long time and that have also been helping create the clinic and um, spread the information to uh, the other countries and, and, and the athletes. It's hard to say, like, is there a perfect way to judge? And our, our judges try really, really hard. They train. They, they are super on it. And, and every time we're in a booth, it is professionalism trying to pick out the best runs of the day. I think it is insanely hard to do that sometimes because the athletes are all so incredibly good. And it, I often say it's like judging art. And how can you say one painting is better than another if they're both do different styles? And that's the hard thing about it, I think, from a judging perspective, is that we're trying our hardest. The nature of the sport of competition is that we have to pick a winner, a first place, second place, third place. And we try to do it. We come up with ways to, to do it. Um, but it is, it, it's also super hard to do that with the highest level of athletes these days. People come in and out, so it's really tough, and um, I just hope that we can continue to try to give them the best professional judging that we're capable of doing, but understand that it's subjective, and sometimes your favorite skier may not have got the first place, but it doesn't mean it wasn't first place in someone else's eyes. So I, I think that's the hardest thing is for us, is when we actually have to pick a winner, mm -hmm. and amongst the judges, there's like, man, I could, there's five guys that I could pick as a winner in this event, or five girls that went off and just charged this competition and had different stuff. So as much as we're trying to make judging consistent, we're trying to keep it progressive, all that stuff, since we're not doing mandates and since we're not doing formulas and all that kind of stuff, which keeps it open progressive, it also lends itself to make it really tough to have a for sure winner every single time.